Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I seem to be missing an ashtray someplace. David, have you seen it? Hmm? It goes right on this table, but... Oh, here it is under your tobacco pouch. I don't see why you're making such a fuss. I'm not making a fuss. I'm just trying to get the living room to look as nice as it can for Mama's sake. What's Mama's sake got to do with it? Oh, for heaven's sakes, David, it's her living room. Especially because she isn't home, I don't want it to not look up to snuff. Mama doesn't use snuff. Oh. If I thought you'd go to such ends, I, I wouldn't have asked Roger to drop up tonight. But I love going to ends, especially when I can make them meet. You think Roger will want to see the baby? No. You don't? Why should he want to see the baby? Oh, I just thought he might. Some people do. Well, Roger's not that kind of people. Mm, I guess not. I guess you wouldn't be either about some other person's baby. I'm not even about my own. Oh, sure. All right, all right, all right. Don't believe it. Maybe I ought to fix the baby's bed just in case Roger's in a polite mood. <laughs> Why don't you ask the baby if he feels like having company? That's an idea. I'll go right now. <laughs> After all, Bobby's to be considered as much as anybody else. He might not feel sociable tonight. I'll ask him. I'll ask well, Put him. yourself in his place. If you were a baby, would you like a procession of people coming in, leaning over the side of your carriage and disturbing you just to say, goo, goo? <laughs> Make funny faces at you? Mm, I wouldn't like it at all. Uh, Bobby probably doesn't either. David, you're going to make a wonderful father. What's that got to do with it? Because you know just how a three and a half weeks old child feels. Oh, well, do you think Mrs. Killian's coming up t tonight? Roger mentioned she's taking Jeffrey to the theater or something. Let us not ever be the kind of couple who go out separately. Us? Not a chance. Sit still, darling. I'll answer. I'm there already. Come in, Roger. Well, well, how's the little mother? Me, I'm fine. Hardly a mother anymore. What? Well, I mean, it's been weeks since I had the baby. So treat me like anybody else, please. That would be a little difficult, my dear, but I'll try. Thank Aren't you, you going to even invite him in, Claudia? She was giving me a few warnings as to how I should behave. <laughs> well, don't pay any attention to her. I always pay attention to Claudia, and I'm very glad of it. You Come on see, in, David? Thank you. She won't be fit to live with for a week. <laughs> Wait till I get a hold of you tomorrow, old man. I shall play sick tomorrow. Sit down, sit down, Roger. Thank you. Well, don't I get to go in and see it? I mean him. The baby? I've come to call on him. Well, what on earth do you want to see him for? He isn't much to look at. Oh, come now. Well, he isn't. He, he, he looks like many other babies age. Oh. No teeth, hardly any hair, and lots of fat. <laughs> Sounds delightful. <laughs> Charming. Mm, not very. He makes weird little noises. He's an awfully bright either. Every word you say tantalizes me. I demand to see him. Ah, uh, look, Roger, look. We're partners and old friends. You, you don't have to be polite to us. But I'm not being polite. You must be being polite. I'm never interested in seeing other people's children. And I'm hardly interested in seeing my own. Thank you <laughs> two proud parents put up a beautiful front. We do? You don't have to come in with me. If you prefer, I'll go in by myself to pay my respects. Or is he asleep now and I, I won't be allowed? Well, if you insist. He's asleep most of the time, so it won't make any difference. Hmm. Normally, with new parents, you can't escape seeing little baby. Well, am I or am I not going to see this wonder child? I'll take a look at him, too, but purely for business reasons. Oh, <laughs> yes, I think I get what you mean. <laughs> well, well, there he is. Oh. Uh, he, he's very sweet. Go on, go on. Yes, Say more. Well, well. Come on. And uh, quite large, too, I, I imagine. Well, go on. Don't leave it there. Think of something else. Well, I, I think he looks... Yes, uh, now don't be embarrassed. Say anything you go like. Go right ahead, Roger. Like both of you. You did very nicely, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, have you had enough... Well, I've, I've seen him, haven't I? And for your hypocrisy, we should make you spend all evening in here. Oh, Lord. But you've been very polite and very gallant, so come on, let's relax and go in the living room. Oh, fine. Uh, uh, goodbye, little fellow. Uh, sleep well tonight. 
Goodbye. Oh, you're really very funny, Roger. Now, why am I funny? Feeling that you had to insist on seeing him. Well, I wanted to. You have done your duty. I've loved seeing your son. But it is difficult, you know, to comment on a three-weeks-old baby. David can hardly understand why he didn't sprout full-grown with a trout pole in his hand. Oh, it would be simpler that way. Mm. Well, what else have you decided for him? Decided for him? Mm Mm-hmm. You've made a trout fisherman out of him. About his future, I mean. (laughs) Oh, oh, that. Well, we're taking him off his two o'clock feeding starting tonight. He didn't even wake up last night. I don't think that those are the details that Roger was interested in. I didn't think so either. Mm. I'm not especially, so I was surprised when he asked. Uh, Roger means Bobby's future. Exactly. Mm. Oh, his future future. Mm. Yes. You know, that sounds awfully far off. When does it come? Much sooner and much faster than you think. That soon? That soon. So soon that you won't have much time to plan a life for your son. And you can't wait for chance or incident to plan it for you. I remember when my boy was born, there were certain things I'd arranged for right then and there. But, of course, there were some things I didn't count on. But I have the satisfaction of saying that I can look back and say that at least the physical things I did for him are right. Roger, it's not the physical things that are the most important. No, I know. But those are the few you can plan on, and they are important, too. Such as? The schools you'll send him to. We have to decide that now? Well, most certainly. It's not too easy to get your boy in the right school and university. The sooner you enroll him, the better. Well, I should think he'd want to decide that for himself. Like you decided for yourself that you didn't want to go to school? Now, let's not get personal about this. We are talking about our son. And that's not personal? Well, not Now you have a boy three weeks old, and you know approximately the kind of person that you hope he will turn out. Hope so. David has certain ideas of education for him, and he could arrange for his son right now to have that kind of education. Uh, David, what uh, preparatory school did you go to? I went to the Craig School. Do you like it? Oh, I like it very much. You mean you like going to school? I certainly did. Braggart. Well, if I were you, I think it would be good to have him follow in your footsteps. Send him to a fine school, which will give him a a good liberal education. Give him the opportunities for knowledge that you want him to have. I'd enroll him at Craig tomorrow. And not for snobbishness or false ambition, either. Maybe he won't want to go to Craig. You must educate him to want to. If he loves his father... He better have. He'll want to do as he did. Of course, David, you're a Harvard man. I would enroll him in Harvard tomorrow. If it were me, I'm not sure I'd like to be told at the age of three weeks that I was going to go away to prep school and then to Harvard and so forth and so on. You don't tell a boy that. You bring him up with those ideas. It's a sort of insurance as to the kind of person he'll become. I, um, I know what Roger means, darling. I know, but I want Bobby to have his, his own hopes and his own ambitions and his own desires. For all I know, he might not be interested in going to college. Why, why lots of wonderful people have never been to college. <laughs> Claudia is talking about herself again. I <laughs> repeat, let's not be personal. Certainly, a lot of wonderful people have never been to college. Some of the finest men of our country never had a formal education. Lincoln, as an example. But if you can give it to your son, you owe it to him. By the very day that my Jeffrey was born, his mother and I enrolled him in Harvard. Well, I think that's very optimistic of you, Roger. I wish we had served him as well at home. However, your son will never suffer from lack of a mother or father who lived together or their devotion to him. So don't let him suffer from the other. That's a nice compliment you gave us, Roger. I know whereof I speak. The few days my son and I spent in your home were life's education to me. So actually, I think I have a great... I have great cheek to advise you at all. Oh, On the contrary, Roger. My interest in you is very selfish. I think it would make me feel I had made fewer mistakes if you made none. Oh, we'll make mistakes. I can hardly wait to see what they are, as a matter of fact. Well, what do you think? Do we take that three-week piece of protoplasm in the next room and start molding him into a solid citizen? I suppose it's, it's never too early to start. That's right. David... Do you want him to go to the school you went to? You turned out all right. Mm, things are a little different now than they were then. I suppose so. Education's different, too. I, I've i thought of it, and I lean toward seeing my boy go to the public school in Eastbrook. I hope you'd say that, David. It's not because I'm putting up the stones and brick that I want him to go to Eastbrook school, but 
because I think it gives the boy a sense of belonging to go to the community school with his neighbors and friends. I agree. I don't think that... I don't think I'd like to bypass or go beyond what we... we have to offer Bobby right here at home. I know, but it's a little different for Bobby than it was for you. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way, David. You know, if I were Eastbrook, I don't think I'd... I don't know, I think I'd feel it was an awful sort of a slap in the face to have a son of one of its most prominent citizens go someplace else to school. I am not one of its most prominent citizens. Oh, now you know you are. And you are not Eastbrook, my love. No, you're right but there. I, uh, I think you have the right idea. Claudia always has, well, she always makes sense, one way or another. That is because I have David. <laughs> You see, Roger, I, I, I know <laughs> what it is I, I really want to educate my son for. You do? Mm. And for that, he's already enrolled. David, you've enrolled him into something already? You didn't tell me. Well, what is it, David? Bobby's enrolled as a citizen of this country. I want him to graduate at 21 into a person of responsibilities and ideals. I want him to be educated to appreciate the principles of this country into which he's been born. I have enrolled him into a life of service and usefulness and hope and idealism. I look to the day when he'll have a diploma of manhood, integrity, and loyalty, that he'll know how to live side by side with his neighbors in peace and cooperation. He'll have that, David. He comes by it. That's his heritage. And a very fine one. I think that the schools and the colleges and the universities to go to, any one, any one of a great number, they're all good. I think they can give him what he wants. If, if he knows what it is he wants. Now, that's the greatest education of all. I think if he's the kind of man who knows what he's, what he's getting an education for, he won't have any trouble getting it anywhere. A number of women get on a bus loaded with bundles. Some look all tuckered out. Some look fresh as daisies. A lot is in the way you go about things. If you pause for ice-cold Coca-Cola during shopping trips, I'll wager you'll look fresher as you carry your packages home. The pause that refreshes is well-named. Coke does help you shop refreshed. He's quite a boy, young Bobby Norton, isn't he, Mr. King? Oh, Roger Killian. Well, we all like him. Hard to believe they ever grow up go to school and college and then... Wait a minute, Mr. Killian. Not so fast. Life's a little slower than that, you know. Oh, not much. By the way, has David mentioned to you when he and Claudia are going back to the farm? I've been meaning to ask him, but we're so busy at the office. Claudia's trying to convince David that they're ready to go back immediately, but he's a little hard to convince. Well, David's a careful man when it comes to his own. But Claudia can be mighty insistent when she wants something. Yes, she can, when she wants something for David. I guess we'll find out more about it tomorrow. Let me know what happens. So long, Mr. King. See you soon, Mr. Killian. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. Now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment... Think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.